Welcome back. As the southern Chinese city of Shenzhen celebrates 40 years of reform and opening up, the wider Pearl River Delta region is now a very different place than it was decades ago. China says it is working on creating an economic super region known as the Greater Bay Area. It includes nine cities in Guangdong province as well as the Hong Kong and Macau SARs. Beijing says the project has great potential, but critics on the other side say the plan is too vague. Before we jump to conclusion, we can perhaps benefit from learning about more nuance about this project. And for that, I'm joined from Hong Kong by Henry Hall, founder and chairman of One Country, Two Systems Youth Forum, and from Macau via Skype by Professor Zhang Chen, Dean of Faculty of Business Administration at the University of Macau, and from Changsha via phone by Charles Wang, Director of Research Center for Logistics and SCM at the China Development Institute. Um, Charles, let me go to you first. Um, according to the development outline for the Greater Bay Area, China wants to build, quote, an international first-class Bay Area and world-class city cluster by 2022, uh, and also an economic system and mode of development mainly supported by innovation uh, by 2035. What's really unique about this uh, Greater Bay Area economic zone? I think uh, there are three numbers. It's one, two, three. Okay. Uh, the unique character of this greater Bay Area is that uh, we are all in one country, but there are two social and legal systems, and also there are three custom territories. I think also the city clusters are very, very close, but this is the unique character of this greater Bay Area. Charles? Yes, yes. go ahead. Uh, so I think uh, the top job is that how we can uh, narrow the gap of the uh, institutional gap uh, to have the deeper integration of Hong Kong, Macau and into this greater Bay Area. I think uh, uh, the Bay Area have a very strong economical foundation and uh, uh, there are three large engine cities and uh, the total GDP capacity in the area is uh, nearly 1.7 trillion U.S. dollars totally. And also, this area have the most developed infrastructure in road, in air, in sea, and rail. If we add all the throughput of the major seaports, airports together, definitely it will be the number one in the world. Right. Um, so Hen also, yeah. Right, right. Uh, Henry in Hong Kong, um, you know, there, there are critics out there uh, saying that the project may be too vague, uh, the plan might be too aggressive. Uh, do you think China has the means to pull off such an uh, you know, ambitious economic plan? Well, I don't think this is uh, too aggressive or too vague. Uh, we all know that the nine cities plus Hong Kong and Macau for the Greater Bay Area actually is around what we call the Pearl River Delta. Uh, most people in Hong Kong or Macau, our earlier generations come from that region. So we have uh, been sharing the same language, uh, culinary habits, and culture for a long time. And what's more important, I think the Great Bay Area has been the pioneering you know, growth engine in, in China, uh, in particular you know, during the period of uh, reforming and opening up. So I would see the Great Bay Area actually is a, quite a natural or, uh, uh, process, and, and it makes economic sense because Hong Kong and Macau, uh, we have a capitalist system, and then, and then we can complement with the uh, mainland China, in the Greater Bay Area, the Guangdong part, uh, which has a socialist system, and, and we can just pull together our strengths and, 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 and become a kind of a world-class uh, uh, hub for uh, innovation and technology development. Right, Henry. Uh, specifically, how do you think the Greater Bay Area uh, can benefit from an integrated uh, market? Uh, and what do Shenzhen, Hong Kong, Macau can get uh, out of this plan? Well, uh, we know that uh, we are having one country, two systems. Uh, that's a benefit of uh, GBA. But of course, we have also some institutional barriers between the, the both sides. And with the Great Bay Area, I understand there will be a, a flow or a better flow of capital, uh, uh, talents, and, and uh, funding, and all ideas uh, between Hong Kong, Macau, and, the, and Guangdong. And with a further integration, I think uh, uh, we will we will be better complementing each other, and if, and if Hong Kong can integrate into the Greater Bay Area, uh, we will uh, have a better you know prospects uh, 
uh, in our next stage of development because we know Hong Kong we are facing a lot of bottlenecks like we have uh, insufficient land uh, our market is not huge enough and the cost of living is too high so I think I see great potential in uh, for Hong Kong in particular for integrating into the GBA mm -hmm. uh, Professor Chen uh, in Macau uh, let me go to you uh, you know, when you look at this Greater Bay Area, uh, some people are like, uh, you know, Shenzhen will be the next uh, technology hub. Uh, Hong Kong will naturally become the next uh, financial and trade hub, and uh, whereas Macau will be the next tourism and trade hub. Uh, do you look at it that way? Uh, pretty much, uh, because each region has their own uniqueness, have their strengths. Uh, the thing is, uh, we should uh, we are looking for coordinated development. Uh, not isolated into three parts. Uh, what that means is uh, for the economic development, each city will use their uh, strength to drive the development in particular industry. Uh, drive does not mean exclusive. They could work together to make joint effort. Uh, for example, Macau is very strong in gaming industry and uh, also the integrated resort uh, management um, that is a very attractive uh, really uh, top uh, class um, in Hong Kong and Shenzhen they have a, also have a, a lot of tourism resources like the Hong Kong Disneyland in Shenzhen uh, window of the world uh, uh, cultural village so each area have their strengths and unique features but they are all in tourism industry so if they work together to fully utilize their strengths and also mm -hmm. make coordinated development. That means that will increase the competitiveness of the whole region in the tourism industry. Well, Professor Chen, what about the headwinds, uh, the challenges? Uh, for example, the Trump administration's executive order, uh, you know, depriving Hong Kong of its uh, preferential treatment, uh, and also COVID-19. Uh, that will certainly have uh, some impact uh, for the development. Uh, for example, uh, the trade barrier that make uh, the resource and uh, uh, that will reduce the competitiveness because the price will be high. But at the end of the day, is the uh, the is the competitiveness of the whole industry is the products. If you really have a good quality uh, products, uh, very value for money, you will win the battle at the end. Uh, so um, although there are some difficulties uh, for the time being uh, for, the, for the trade uh, uh, dif uh, disagreement uh, and also some co impact of COVID-19, which hit uh, the tourism industry uh, hospitality very badly. Uh, but I think if you already build your strength, you can really produce, you have the core technology, you can really produce a very high competitive product uh, uh, that should be, all these difficulties should be tackled already. Um, we uh, should have a, a great future. Well, Charles, um, let me ask you this. You know, some have yeah. compared the Greater Bay Area with uh, other Bay Areas. Uh, for example, the, the one in San Francisco area in the United States West Coast, uh, the Silicon Valley. Uh, how do you see this comparison? I think uh, the Greater Bay Area has more, uh, you know, uh, meaning than just Silicon Valley. Uh, because those mega, uh, mega metropolis have uh, more uh, diversified industries, they have a bigger population, a bigger economic capacity, uh, because this mega city with nine you know, cities clustered together, we have the uh, financial trade uh, center, trade center, shipping center. So this greater Bay Area is more diversified, more dynamic. I think it uh, will be uh, totally different than just the Valley, which is uh, featured by the high tech sector. Uh, Henry, I mean, how can you make sure that the growth uh, of this Greater Bay Area can benefit every city uh, and can benefit the largest amount of people? Because if you look at the, the data, I mean, uh, of course, uh, the, the big cities like Zhuhai, Hong Kong SAR, Macau SAR uh, have very uh, good GDP per capita numbers. Um, but how can you make sure that this Greater Bay Area can really benefit um, all the cities, counties, townships in the region? that uh, there are some 
you know, difference in the level of development among the nine cities in, in Guangdong. Uh, but I will see an opportunity for, for great development for these cities because uh, for some cities they may not be well known for people in the Western world or even some Hong Kong business sector they have not really thought of you know, having investment in there. But as they are under the same umbrella of greater area, I think uh, this will be good for those uh, uh, cit uh, cities with uh, lesser development. And also, I would see there will be a better allocation of uh, resources and also, you know, industries uh, within the Greater Bay Area. Uh, now we have uh, Shenzhen as the innovation hub and Hong Kong for financial and trade hub and, and Macau for uh, entertainment, uh, entertainment and gaming. So uh, for the other cities, I think uh, it will be up to them to really find their positioning uh, to benefit their development and also for the whole Greater Bay Area. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Chen, uh, you know, China officially opened the world's longest sea bridge in 2018, connecting Hong Kong to Macau and the Chinese mainland city of Zhuhai. Uh, what, what role do you see infrastructure projects like this uh, play in the whole plan? I think the core value of the uh, Great Bay Area is the resource, resource sharing and the coordination. Um, infrastructure makes this happen. Um, before the bridge, uh, if uh, we want to transport some um, uh, goods from, say, from Hong Kong to uh, Zhongshan, it takes uh, much longer, uh, pro probably several hours or half day, but nowadays if you uh, want to uh, trans, uh, transport some, some resource from say Hong Kong to, to Zhongshan, uh, it will only take 30 minutes mm -hmm. to cross the bridge from Hong Kong to Zhuhai, then from Zhuhai to Zhongshan probably another 45 minutes. So the bridge uh, actually uh, gave, uh, it greatly improved the infrastructure. That is the foundation for economic development. It improved uh, the efficiency and the mobility of labor and the physical resource and also logistic. This is particularly important to the western part of Great Bay Area, uh, which uh, is uh, less developed compared with the eastern part. Uh, so with this uh, great infrastructure, uh, so the resource, that makes uh, the resource sharing much easier. Certainly, we say much more um, economic uh, development in the western part of the Great Bay Area. Oh, well, um, Charles, you know, we've heard from Professor Chen talking about infrastructure, but it's, just, it's more than just infrastructure, right? Uh, there needs to be yes. a unified uh, or... Uh, you know, tax system, there are different customs and legal systems like Henry has mentioned. Uh, how do you think the plan can deal with all those issues, uh, all these challenges ahead? I think besides the uh, rapid development of the infrastructures, the most important thing is how the Guangdong part can uh, speeding up its uh, opening and reform. And because we are not saying that we are merging different tax and customs and legal systems. Actually, we, uh, there are already three free trade zones in the Guangdong area, in Shenzhen, uh, Qianghai, and also in Nansha, and also in Hengqin. Uh, we, what we expect, we are looking at that, there will be more opening policy, and it will be introduced more international best practice uh, from Hong Kong or from other free trade areas, so that the opening level will be improved to, to narrow the gap of the institutional gap between the mainland part and the Hong Kong and Macau. Institutional gap, uh, a very well um, a coined a concept. Uh, I want to thank all of our guests for tonight, uh, Henry Hall, uh, Charles Wong, and also Professor Jean Chen. Uh, thank you also very much. And that will do it for this edition of The Point. As always, follow us on Facebook and Twitter using the handle Liu Xin in Beijing. Download the CGTN app to watch our show. I'm Wang Guan, sitting for Liu Xin. Thank you for watching. <laughs>